Hello, this is SAT1 Math with Joe Beck. Uh, it's me again. Now, uh, this is actually our Lecture 3 video, and uh, I'll try to dress up a little nicer today. So, you know, just like math gets more and more fun as you get better, hopefully, you know, I'll get a little better dressed and, uh, you know, more uh, presentable as I go along. So, let's actually do the Super Challenge review we did from Lecture 2. So, in this problem that we talked about where it says some fixed value of x, x is x plus 2, or 9x plus 2 equals y. After the value of x is increased by 3, 9 times x plus 2 equals w. So what is the value of w minus y? So how'd you all do? All right, let's see if you guys got the right answer. So, well, let's go start with the, uh, I guess, you know, solving it right away. Uh, then we can see how you guys do. Now, first of all, we have to see that for x, right, 9 times x plus 2 equals y is exactly the same as 9, plus x, or 9 times x plus 2 equals w, correct, right? So the only difference is the fact that x is increased by 3. That's the only difference, right? So therefore, one thing that we can actually notice is since everything is the same, what's going to happen, right? 9 times x is going to be still 9 times x, right? And 9 times 2 is still going to be 9 times 2, right? So the only difference that we actually see is the fact that x is increased by 3. Correct, right? So the only thing that actually changes is when we multiply by 9, so we have something like this, right? And we, when we multiply by 9, right, this 9 times 3 is the only thing that is different from well, anything else, right? So basically that means that 9 times 3 is 27, correct? So the value, or what is the value of W minus Y? What that basically means is W and Y are exactly the same except for the fact that W, since uh, X is increased by 3, will have a greater number of 27. Therefore, the answer is actually 27. Now, for those of you who try to do long equations of algebra and things like that, yeah, that's fine. That, that's a great thing. That means you understand the concepts, right? And the greatest way you could have done that is actually solve for x when you increase it by 3. However, this is actually the easiest way to do it, to even think about it a little bit logically. And I will go along and uh, tell you all of these things on how you could improve uh, the strategies that you know and uh, even the knowledge that you know, right? So that you can actually get faster and uh, just think about logic to you just you know cut to the chase uh, all right so for today let me erase these lines for you we are actually still going over arithmetic skills and concepts still still a little bit basic but we're gonna get a little bit focused so you know it'll be a little bit better so just so you guys whoever's following along with the Barron's book we're actually gonna be covering mainly 3.2 and 3.8 today so make sure and follow along for those of you without a book don't worry about it I'll cover everything you need to know now before we actually get to the sections of uh, or the topics of arithmetic skills uh, we're gonna do strategies so every time you see this thing right uh, this is actually a board of risk right it's gonna be strategies and I'll teach you guys just small strategies for each lecture so you guys can improve your skill and accuracy as well as well mainly speed okay so let's take this problem for example it says what is the units of digit 3 to the 35th power okay first of all right 3 to the 35th power is a lot, okay? Now, one thing is, well, for the actual SAT1 math, you will have the calculator, so, you know, that won't be as big of a problem. However, you have to get the concepts for a lot of these in order to understand, right, um, how to plug it into your calculator, okay? So, for this problem,